We hired for a different economic reality than the one we face today. That's what Google CEO Sundar Pinchai said today as parent company Alphabet announced it's laying off 12,000 employees. So what economic reality lies ahead for Google? John Freeman is the CFRA Vice President of Equity Research. Nice to see you, sir. Uh, you know, it's nice hey. to see in your notes, not entirely focused on the share bounce or the headcount, but the personal side of this, if you don't yeah. mind laying in, uh, weighing in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, getting laid off is just, it, it can be a traumatic experience for your life. I've been laid off. It is not fun. It's a one-two punch. One, it hits your ego, right? And then two, suddenly you have the stress of having to find a job all of a sudden. Now, with the likes of Google and the likes of Alphabet, Microsoft, right? We, we know what their their cost of their layoffs are gonna be about 10,000 people. And that's 1.2 billion. They said they were taking on a charge. So back, you know, back envelope, some of that might be restructuring. But a lot of that is severance. And that's, you know, that's close to $100,000 or $20,000, you know, somewhere around there uh, for severance on average. I don't know if all the employees are getting that. That'd be something I'd like to know. Because here's the thing. It's it's also a, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not just the humane thing to do and they can do it. Um, but it's also their vested interest because they're going to have to hire again, right? And the coder community and all of the professionals around developing, you know, securing and operating software, that's a tight community, right? And they judge, right? And so, you know, treating the layoff, the people who are laid off, you know, uh, uh, well, I, I think does bodes well for future ability to hire. I think that's a strategic move that they should be able to make. Um, so, you know, th that's kind of the way I look at it. John, taking a look at the reaction that we've seen in the stock today, shares up just about over 5% right now. When we talk about the significance of the cuts when it comes to Google's business, I guess, how significantly do you see this potentially helping Google's earnings in this very, very tough environment? Right. So now I, I take off my human hat and I put on my equity analyst hat. And, you know, in that regard, uh, you know, it, it, it always I want to I, I get pulled in one direction because I, you know, I feel for the people. Then I'm also like, hmm, it might be some you know, pretty uh, interesting expression of, uh, of operating leverage there. Maybe maybe margins go up. Right. So and that does happen, particularly in these not, not all software companies are the same, not all software businesses are the same. I think the ones with more uh, recurring revenue and Google's advertising is not necessarily recurring, but you can pretty much count on it. It's not going to go into like free fall. Right. Um, anytime soon, except maybe with chat GTP, <laughs> but, right? So, but you can, like, if you, if you look at Microsoft, you look at Salesforce.com, you look at ServiceNow, you look at these enterprise software companies that are all cloud-based, their revenue is mission, their software is mission critical, and the revenue is recurring pretty, you know, count on it, may not grow as fast, right? But now your, but your marginal cost really starts to fall off and, and, and the operating margins are going to pop. And, and I think that's I think that's going to be the thing that surprises people about these companies and these stocks in the next couple of quarters is that growth might you know really decline faster than people expect, but earnings growth and revenue growth will decline faster than people expect, but earnings growth right profitability uh, uh, can can definitely make up for it because of the nature the inherent operating leverage of these cloud based businesses. You mentioned chat GPT. That's the word that yeah. triggers me right now. Yeah. All in on chat GPT. Interesting reporting in the New York Times today. I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, Sergey yeah. Brin and Larry Page have come back to kind of answer this competition from right. Microsoft, who is out of the gate leading this field. How significant is that gap? Can they catch up? And how big of a differentiator is it in the sector? See, there is a gap. But, and, and there, there's definitely a gap, but it, I don't think it's that particularly great. It's not, it's not something, I mean, Alphabet's been working on this stuff also for a long time. And Microsoft with ChatGPT simply has a kind of a surge of, of usefulness, which begets a surge of usage, which begets a surge of usefulness. These are feedback loops, right? And I don't think Google's gonna sit still on this, but here's the thing, ChatGPT's threat to Google search, I think is much less uh, it's, it's probably a bigger deal or, or, or uh, uh, more, more uh, overhyped. What I really suggest you to be for is the integration with Office. 
as an opportunity for Microsoft, that's tremendous, right? That's what really I think it's interesting. Um, you know, if you have an assistant, or, or basically a, think about it as a, a word companion. I mean, there's so many different places you could see it being incredibly useful as people get to use it, and it is a tool that people will need to have to get to use and 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 become proficient with. And the proficiency of the software and the proficiency of the users. Again, it's a feedback loop. So I see a lot of potential with ChatGTP. I don't think Google's out of the race, but I think they're in a slightly different race. I think the things that they are focused on are not quite what Microsoft is focused on. It's with a big overlap, obviously, being search. And to the degree that Microsoft could use ChatGPT to take search, well, that's just good for them, right? There's no, right? They've obviously got a very small percentage of share now. So it's all upside for Microsoft as the way I see it. John, in terms of the upside there then for Microsoft, it's very popular. You can clearly see that by the number of times it's been used by the downloads, also just the number of headlines that it has grabbed over the last month and a half. How does Microsoft, though, monetize it when we talk about it really potentially having an impact down the line? Well, that's a difficult thing to say right now. And I don't think the monetization, I, I think they'll probably wait on pressing the, the pedal on monetization. And what they want to do is demonstrate value and get people to use it. So it'll be integrated with Microsoft Word. It'll be integrated with all your Office apps. And for a while, you'll start to use it. And then, you know, it's the most brute, brute force sort of way of expressing monetization. This is they'll raise prices and have, you know, a, a chat GTP optimized version of Office, right? So I, I think that's one way of doing it. Um, but clearly, they have to demonstrate value. And obviously, Right off the bat, they're, they're seeing they're demonstrating some pretty tremendous value. Um, the interesting thing about the Pichai comment about a code red, I thought was interesting because it reminded me a lot of Bill Gates's, you know, email in 1995. Uh, I'm old enough to remember that. And you know, when he was uh, when you know, in basically trying to go Microsoft into reacting to Netscape and the threat of the World Wide Web and the threat of the browser. Um, it remind it, it seems very similar. You know, history doesn't repeat, but it certainly rhymes.